If you've ever harbored dreams of being a knight in shining armor, then have a look at this. Hello. Chronicles of the Sword is a point-and-click adventure game that puts you in the sandals of a young knight errant trying to prove his mettle in the court of King Arthur. Chronicle of the Sword is out next spring on the PlayStation with the PC CD-ROM to follow. Out soon are two new add-ons that could magically transform your Saturn. Put in this and it becomes a photo CD player allowing you to use a state-of-the-art console to view your holiday snaps. This cartridge, however, is a little more impressive. It lets you view movie CDs and music videos. If you're after a PC racing game that's more than just a Ridge Racer clone, then check out Big Red Racing. The game features an array of unusual vehicles to control, like rubber dinghies, and a variety of fast-moving 3D environments to race in. Its programmers also worked on the classic Micro Machines 2, so it should play as good as it looks. Big Red Racing is due out on the PC at the end of November. Last year, Wing Commander 3 made history by being the first interactive movie that was also a half-decent game. This year, Wing Commander 4 aims to repeat that formula, but on a bigger, more flashy scale. Costing $9 million to produce, it's reckoned to be the most expensive computer game ever. Like its predecessor, the game stars Mark I'm More Than Just Luke Skywalker Hamill, who plays a hotshot space pilot. It's out on PC CD-ROM in December, with other formats to follow. Now some more of this week's game releases, reviewed by our expert panel. Those suicidal stars, the Lemmings, leap into the third dimension this week on the PlayStation and PC. The aim, as always, is to guide the Lemmings to safety through a 3D world filled with traps and obstacles. The game features 10 themed sections with 100 levels in all, but will 3D Lemmings have you leaping for joy or leaping off the cliff? Here's Paul. The Lemmings are back in this great game. It has all the original humour of the first, but with even more frustrating gameplay. The gameplay is the same as the original. You give the lemmings jobs. Here's a builder. This game is not a game for an inexperienced player. You always have to be thinking of your next move. You can use it either a mouse or a joypad. I found it easier using the joypad because you have more buttons. There are several different views. You can zoom in, zoom out, or use the camera to get a better position. My favorite view, though, is the virtual lemming. Virtual lemming, okay. You get to see it through the lemming's eyes. Yippee! Every time you complete 20 levels, you get a little boy scout badge and an animation as a reward. If you're a puzzle fan, this is the best game on the PlayStation, but it is very hard, so you won't finish it quickly. It's a game you have to be patient with. It takes time to get to know it. I like the different views. It's frustrating at first, but once you get into it, it becomes compulsive. And the scores for 3D Lemmings, both the girls and the boys gave it a pretty good four out of five. A few weeks ago, we gave away one of these as a competition prize, the Virtual Boy. Now, it's an unusual handheld because it gives you a 3D image that is a picture with a sense of depth. It works because inside the machine, there are two tiny TV screens that these produce a different picture to each eye, and that's what gives you the sense of depth. It is possible to create a 3D image on a single monitor, and we've shown you several systems in the past on Bad Influence, but all of them involve wearing rather embarrassing eyewear. This system, for example, creates the two images by projecting two different colours. Wearing these glasses, you would see the red image with your left eye, the blue one blocked out, and the blue image with your right eye, the red one will be blocked out. So left, red, blue, right, two images, hey presto, 3D. We filmed a far more sophisticated version of this system at a computer graphic show a couple of years ago. This one works because the TV screen rapidly switches between the right and left pictures and at the same time the lenses in the glasses go alternately light and dark. Again, different images provided to different eyes, so depth. Everyone agrees it will be brilliant to play video games in 3D, but everyone agrees you look very sad wearing glasses like this and won't wear them at the arcade. Well now, you don't have to, because this system produces 3D pictures without having to wear the silly glasses. You are watching at home in 2D, so you can't get a full idea of the 3D, but Les, if I can just borrow your camera, thank you very much, I should be able to give you an idea of the depth. And Sonia, you stand perfectly still. Now, as I move round to the left, there is the beginning of the picture. As I move round to the right, you should be able to see, look, round the side of the gun Sonia's holding, and then round the other side. There's definitely a feeling of depth to that picture, and if you needed further proof, look at the lampshade behind Sonia's head that's definitely moving in relation to her. All very clever, but how does it work? Now here at the glamorous end of 3D TV, I'm being filmed by six cameras at once, and each one is seeing me from a slightly different angle. So there's camera one on the far left, camera two, camera three, 
camera four, camera five, and camera six. Each camera sends a picture in turn to 3D TV here. And at the back, there's a TV. And at the front, there's some very clever lenses and optics. And what those lenses and optics do, go back, go back, go back, is project the images from the six cameras in such a way as I can only see them from a certain angle. I'll try and show you what I mean. Over to the left, you can't see anything. There's camera one, there's camera two, three, four, five, six, and out. Now that's all well and good when you're looking with one eye, like a television camera, but remember, as a human standing here, I'm looking with two eyes. So if I stand here, my left eye might be seeing camera one, my right eye is probably seeing camera three. If I move across a little bit, my left eye might be seeing camera two, and my right eye, camera four. Wherever I stand, I'm seeing two different images. Two images, depth. Now, if instead of using six cameras, you used one computer to generate six images, you've got yourself a 3D video game. Like this one. This is a 3D breakout, a game specially designed for the system. You play it with an air mouse like this, and the object of the exercise is to knock out all the blocks on the back wall, and it's great fun. The bad news is that at the moment, it's all very expensive. This prototype version alone costs over £100,000. But the good news is the developers hope to have 3D game systems like this in the arcades by this time next year. So watch this three-dimensional space. 3D TV sounds like science fiction, but here it is. So perhaps one day we will have ray guns, intelligent robots, and even time machines. One person who certainly hopes so is our very own space monster, Violet Berlin. <laughs> Doctor Who, travel through time and space, parallel universes, genetic engineering, fantastic alien life forms. It's no wonder that science fiction has got its fans, and I'm one of them. This week, I got a bit overexcited when I discovered that the Gronier Encyclopedia of Science Fiction has been squeezed into this. So, how has it benefited from its multimedia makeover? Well, the first thing I clicked on were the movie clips, which seem mainly to be trailers for 50s crowd pullers like The Blob. Special effects have come a long way since that was shot. Unfortunately, time also seems to have moved on since most of the other graphic material was created. There are movie posters and photos from the original Star Trek, but nothing on more contemporary classics like The X-Files. But the CD more than makes up for it with the words. No, really, surfing through by clicking on hypertext links I came across some fascinating stuff, including a catalogue of common scientific errors. For example, did you know there's something fatally wrong with all those scenes where you see a starship exploding noisily in space? A sound wave can't travel in a vacuum, so in real life it would be deadly silent. It also points out that the giant spiders out of monster movies couldn't ever exist. Once the creepy crawly grew to a certain size, its spindly legs would be unable to support the heavier body, so it would collapse under its own weight. <coughs> Virtual Violet's proving that not all science fiction fans are sad analogs. This week's competition prize is a SNES with Killer Instinct, and we have a science fiction question. Why can't you hear spacecraft exploding in space? Is it because A, there's no air, B, there's lots of rocks, or C, there's too much radiation? Phone in your answer on 0891 800 300. That's 0891 800 300. Calls will cost no more than 25 pence. Lines close at midnight on Sunday. But most important of all, please get permission from whoever pays the phone bill before you die. Now, last week's competition prize was an Amiga with software including the great new game Worms. And we asked what computer language was Worms originally programmed in? The answer is basic. Now, we had over 6,000 entries, but the winner is Debbie Smith from Glasgow. Ten runners up get Bad Influence Bad Food t-shirts and their names are running across the screen right now. Oh, well done to you. Don't forget to watch next week because we're going behind the scenes of a star-studded video game. It's called The Darkening and we leave you with a clip of it. Bye. See ya. <laughs>